Is turbulence ever dangerous? Turbulence is annoying. It can be dangerous, but there's... Um, we just released a, a course uh, called um, Conquering Your Fear of Flying. And in that course, we talk about overcoming your fear of turbulence because that's kind of like the number one thing. People don't like when the airplane starts to bounce. Right. So there's light, moderate, and severe turbulence. You're, you're not allowed to be dispatched through severe turbulence. If it's known, they can't fly you through it. You have to go around it or don't go fly it. Now, moderate and light, yeah, all the time, right? The airplane is not going to come apart. It's not. It's just completely over-engineered for that yeah if you think about turbulence like the current in a river or water currents when it's nice and smooth it's like you're on the lake there's just no currents but you start going down the river and the current picks up a little bit in speed so you start getting into some light turbulence and it's it's kind of annoying but it's no dangerous to you mm -hmm. the the moderate turbulence are like the white water rafting you know you're kind of holding on to the armrest and you're holding on to your drink and you're going through the white water you could capsize you could in a boat, right. right? In the water, you drown in the water, but yeah. you're in an airplane. It's not going to capsize. It's not going to turn over. It's going to bounce. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable, but the wings aren't going to come off the airplane. It's again, they're not nearly as dense as the water is. It's just air currents. Mm -hmm. But like anything else, when there's converging currents that come in together, like the jet stream's going this way and something else is going that way, yeah. it's going to cause bumps. Um, I try to avoid it just for the comfort level for yeah. the passengers, but there's no danger to the airplane at all. No danger. It's not None. dangerous at it's all. It's just annoying in the back, and it makes you nervous. That's reassuring. Right. And the other thing is. What the hell is this? He's going to show me all the he said aloha that, air. He said that planes are, are going to come apart, and this image popped up in my brain. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, Aloha. I don't remember this. Yeah, that was a that was a corrosion issue that they had with those airplanes and and that whole because of the pressurization. Is that, what is that? Those are all the seats. They, is that, that like three people? Is that plane on the ground? No, they were airborne. How did they get that photo? I don't know. It's probably Photoshop. That's got to be AI. It's on, this is on the, that's on the ground. The other one was in the, in the sky that yeah. you were just showing, Steve. Yeah, that's probably Photoshop. On the le yeah, that one. Yeah, that's that's the ground photo. See the guy standing. Yeah. Somebody put it in the uh, air. Ah, they put that's it in all. the air. I see. That's so what What was the story with this? So it was a corrosion issue, and, and uh, they had a, um, they, basically the airplane is pressurized from the inside, and uh, if if something starts to give way, it'll it'll rip, and it ripped the whole top of that Aloha jet off. Whoa. That's a 737. But look, all that damage, and the airplane still flew. Did they everyone were, survive? I think three people died. I think there one row of passengers was like sucked out. Because they weren't wearing their seatbelts? Well, that's why I tell people, keep your seatbelt fastened. <laughs> yeah, that's... Right? That's the worst... I never buckle my seatbelt. That's the worst case example of that. But, but okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to convert you here. I always, I always go like this when they're walking by, so they can't see if I'm wearing my seatbelt or not. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Because look above you, 12 inches, 18 inches above you is a hard surface. Right. So you're probably not going to get sucked out of the airplane like that. That's a one in a billion shot. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen is you're going to be in some turbulence that, that pops up that fast, and you're going to come out of that seat, hit that overhead, break your neck, and that's it. Oh. And you know, and you know how much liability the air, the um, the airline is under? Zero. Zero, because that seatbelt sign was on, and I probably came on and told you to fasten your seatbelt, and if you unbuckled it, that's on you. I'm converted. Yep. So let me ask you this: mm -hmm. Where is the best safest seat on the airplane for somebody the, your couch at home there isn't one really I mean, yeah i like, mean i'm sure depending on how the plane if if a plane yeah. crashes no two plane crashes are the same right so it's that's hard true. it's hard to to run the numbers on that some people say the back of the airplane because the front of the airplane takes the impact right some people say what 11a because that guy in air india walked away he was in 11a and in he, india yeah and he he just uh next to the exit so he was right in the leading edge of the wing, right where the back of that the damage is right there. Yep. There's a thing called the wing spar. And the wing spar is the heaviest, hardest part of the airplane. It's like a big old I-beam mm -hmm. that goes from one wing to the other. Right. And he was right behind that. So they think that that wing spar took most of the impact that he would have taken. And then he, he's a pretty big, strong guy. Yeah. And he just got lucky. Good Lord. He just did. You know, the fireball and everything else. How did he walk out of all that? I have to use the restroom real quick. Yeah. We'll take a quick five minute break. Have you ever heard of the summer of the shark? No, no. The theory is that uh, during the summer months, there's usually 
there, there was one, I think there was one specific summer where there was like more shark attacks ever reported in history. And that was like the summer that there was nothing happening in the news. And all the news channels, they needed to make stories. So they were just highlighting all the shark attacks that were happening. Right. And they thought, oh my God, the sharks are on a rampage right now, just eating people. What's mm -hmm. going on? But that's all it was. Like they were just focusing more on the sharks. And I think that's what happens with airplanes, right? It's like when there's an airplane crash, the news just grabs onto it and makes it a huge spectacle. Absolutely. And, and so it, it seems like right. there's a lot of plane crashes. And it's been so safe. There's been so little of that the last 15 years. Uh, that it doesn't make the news. But this past year, it started out with a DCA crash up in Washington, and then Air India was after that, and this UPS one a couple of months ago. So there's been some major crashes. It's been a long time since then. And channels like mine, where I cover incidents and accidents three or four times a week, mm -hmm. um, we're not making them up. They're just, there's that stuff happens out there. You just don't hear about it. And now we're reporting on it. Yeah. So now it seems like, oh my word, you know, you know, it, no, it's it's not any more frequent than it was in the past. It's just getting reported more than it was. Yeah, and when you see those graphics of all of the planes that are in the air in the continental United States at one time, it's insane. Right, you can't even see the actual map because it's covered in planes everywhere. Right. Every day, one hundred and four thousand takeoffs and landings worldwide. Every day. <sighs> For, try to find an image of that because that's. I think people should see that. Like how many planes are actually in the yep. air? One that yeah, the the one on the top right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh my god! Yeah. How <laughs> crazy is that? Now, if an airplane was as big as Idaho, it right. would look like that. <laughs> right, but, right, that's true. <laughs> but that's a lot. Yeah. Is it true you can't fly over the North Pole or over Antarctica? Uh, you can. It's just it, we. I've flown close to the North Pole. It's. It depends on what kind of nav equipment you get. It gets a little squirrely as it, it, everything is south. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, um, it gets a little squirrely. But there, there are so many redundant systems now, especially with GPS, um, that you're you're talking to something out in outer space instead of something on the ground or something that's internal that doesn't know where to go when you get to true north or mm -hmm. the the North Pole. But yeah. What is that anomaly we were looking at the other day, Steve? There's there's this anomaly in the in the South Atlantic anomaly. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. There's like this weird hole in the atmosphere where there's like a ton of radiation coming through the earth and they call it the South Atlantic anomaly, I believe. Hmm. The South Atlantic anomaly is a large expanding weak spot in the earth's magnetic field over South America and the South Atlantic allowing charged solar particles to drip closer to the surface. Mm -hmm. Um, so that must not be a big deal. Well, I think it is. If you, if you, there's times where solar activity is higher than, than other times yeah. and, and you'll get, Hey, look at that. That's crazy. Yeah. We just did a, a video talking about with, about a bit flip and how, um, this airplane, I think it was a jet blue airplane coming from Cancun just nosed over. And, uh, that's what started. They, they grounded all the air buses, not all of them, half of them, about 6,000 airplanes, to, to update the software because this of this bit flip possibility and that they said happened because of a solar flare. So in, in, in spots like that, is it the incident of solar flares higher? Yeah. Mm. Could it, could it cause a bit flip? It could. So again, you don't want to risk that sort of thing. Right. Um, but it's it all, it's all kind of very rare anyway to see a bit flip is once in a lifetime. Go back to that last graphic, Steve, that you had with all the airplanes in the sky at once. <laughs> So what's up with those circles? Why are there no planes in those circles? It's called the Himalayas. So nobody flies over the Himalayas. Oh, those are mountainous areas. Correct. Okay, that makes sense. Is it dangerous? Yeah, you, you can't really, there's no, if, so the Himalayas are 35,000 feet. If you got an airplane that's a, capable of flying over it, you've only got 2,000 foot of clearance. And then if something goes wrong and you lose an engine and you have to descend, you got no place to go. Right, you're in a bowl and you can't mm. get out of it. So those those circles are bowls where nobody can can get out of it. So they they don't frequently dispatch an airplane through those places. You go around them. That makes a lot of sense. Yep, mountains.